A common misconception when making a successful game is assuming the game actually has to be good, when in fact we know this is not true. Bad games succeed all the time, so it's about time I cashed in with the game of the century Fallout 69, a role playing game with all the advertising and none of the gameplay. What we need to start is an area that will look dense and populated for the trailer, we'll get all the basics down, then we surround this with inaccessible buildings that exist solely to inconvenience the player, mountains to block the vision of the players in what we'll call a deceitful dockyard, trees to really improve improve on the world design and scenic beauty, and more inns that charge real money for players to rest their heads. With no quests, no enemies, and most importantly no money, our game is in the perfect state to release to the players. Now that the game is out, let's add in some enemies, and of course, missions that will stall the player with repetitive, extremely difficult tasks out of the gate given by a crocodile. While they're stuck with that, we'll build out the next area, placing down the five essentials and another quest giver with quests such as this quest which I achieved by slamming my head onto the keyboard. That looks like a completely built out area to me, onto the next one. For whatever reason, the Beaumont Bear Association is not respawning automatically, so we'll have to use this trick to do that. And what do we have here? An item duper? I'll only issue a warning, but if you cry, we we currently have 1,586 subscribers signed up for our hollow game with lackluster gameplay and world design that only took minutes to randomly throw down. I've made another level as well, but we'll come back to that in a second. First, I'm changing the blacksmith from gold to real money to get these microtransactions online. I also hear people are quite unhappy with the lack of inns. Here are 20 of them. I hope that makes them happy. Additionally, the game says players have an easier time if I actually place down pathing. I can do that. Here's a path that leads all the way to the village, however, we will line this path with blacksmiths that charged $1,000 per item to tempt our more distinguished players. Oh, and if they don't follow that path, they have to run through an area packed with enemies. Back to our world building, the new level features all the basics plus a metric ton of palm trees that grow exclusively in desert climates. Then we line the forest with enemies, and what we have is one of the greatest levels in gaming history. We get to update the game after that as well, and this is a good opportunity to improve our advertising skills. Looking over our second level here, there seems to be a steep difficulty curve, as you can see by all the deaths and endless respawning of players here. I think so many people are respawning that the gates of heaven are opening. On to level 4, we will surround the village with a wall and only one entrance on the far side. Then we will rock a winter ring on the outside and a desert patch on the inside to show that the game designers know what real gamers want. And how about a bunch of cactuses to sigh and mushrooms to make them think, wow, the scenery really is beautiful. After that, we spend 13,000 programming a large field of... What did I put down here? Alright, spiders. With 3,000 subscribers and all this content, it's about time we upgrade to version 2.0. We still only have one GM and one dev, but hey, what more do you really need? And would you look at that, the renowned XYZ publication has awarded us with the best quests award. This is an honor. It must have been perhaps for bear deforestation, or a trivial task to provide a false sense of progression. In light of this news, I'm upping the price of the game from free to play to $60. I've also discovered our enticing MMORPG is creating addiction, which is neat. We do have plenty of cheaters in the game, but hey, money's money. Checking in on our players, we have a large collection of people collecting in this enemy zone, laughing over the bodies of their enemies. And now I'm going to buy a ton of land with all the money we've accumulated and plan out the level progression. We are up to 5,300 subscribers now and things are progressing well. I'm going to throw down many more inns because that's still a problem and would you look at that we've won the award for best visuals. They know quality when they see it. <laughs> Here's another 10,000 keep saying good things. In other news the game designers have added a copious amount of icicles to the desert which allows for yet another patch where we can up the advertising. I've also tried to make the game more interesting by actually adding a gameplay feature for once with PvP dueling, and we are now experiencing a minor increase in health tickets. To combat the bad PR, we will bring 30 GMs on board to handle the tickets, and leave the one sole developer to fend for himself. These duels are pretty crazy though, this guy was just talking about paddle ball with the boys, then left mid-conversation to die to a wizard named Great. Unfortunately, I think it's about time we shut off the PvP. It's a failed feature, and it's frying the minds of our players. This guy is completely addicted to our game, he can't stop saying the scenery is beautiful, and even after shutting off the PvP twice, all of these players players are still in their challenging positions. In other news, people are walking a quarter of a mile into the sky, then back down at the starting area, which is possible for whatever reason. I'm building out yet another level with lots and lots of thorns coming out of the ground, and look at that, more advertising. Only now have I realized I can add more classes to the game, so let's unlock some of these. We have the Paladin, pretty cool, the Warrior, seems like it probably should have been in the base game, and ah yes, the Seal, a staple in every RPG. Let's just give him all of the abilities and this cool hat that makes him really look like a gunslinger. The Warrior is a little generic, let's spice 
spice up his look with an arm shorter than the other, a hook hand, a tail, and perhaps a hat with a funny feather in it. To top it off, he's now a ginger. Warrior is a boring name as well. I'll instead dub him the 25 cent man. The paladin is pretty cool as is actually, I'll just add in the abilities. And before we move on, let's actually change the default name of the seal to big boy. Beautiful. We are populating the world with more big boys, always good to see. We are now up to $202,000 cash and 7,000 subscribers. Business is booming. We are firmly out of our crippling debt, and in fact, let's repay that loan. I've also found out that we can add more enemies to the game, so I'm going to unlock all the defaults that I can, including this great value Assassin's Creed character, and now we can populate our world with more of a variety of enemies. In fact, I'm switching the starting area to the Detective Pandas. And as an act of kindness, I'm going to make the starting areas cost next to nothing. They were formerly 20 real dollars, but all the other ends will be 10 real dollars to enjoy because this is America. Our wealth is expanding, so now I will hire the maximum amount of developers. Also, like the big brain genius I am, I just figured out that the enemy spawn zones are powered by the Wi-Fi as well, so now our enemies can automatically restock themselves instead of me hammering the spawn button. I'm also going to lower the cost of blacksmiths from $1,000 to $20 to trick people into thinking they're getting a deal. We've built a truly easy and balanced game here. As we can see, our players are loving being fed wave after wave to their inevitable demise. Jokes aside, they're doing quite awful actually, so let's give them some buffs. A few here, a few there, and for the big boy class, we'll completely max out health and speed because big boy is best boy. I'm also going to nerf the marine enemy class to 5 HP and maximize their speed as a counterbalance. After that taxing effort, I'm going to increase the recurring to a whopping $30 a month. Now for more game designing, we have lots of trees and pillars and time for update 3, where we add parties to the game. We were able to add another new class to the game as well, which will be a rat with a floating top hat and his whole body will be red. He will be known as Ratman the Conqueror. Max skills across the board for him as well. The new enemy is currently called Marksman, and I've got nothing for this one, so instead he will just be called Markman, and he will wear a plague mask and a white sombrero, a popular fashion during the Black Plague. The board decided a year-long break was imperative to step back from the development of the game and avoid the pending lawsuits for all the strenuous hours placed on our employees. The game was left unfinished, and in fact, we only really built out half the game, but on the bright side, we now have $2.1 million and 20,000 subscribers. We also won quite a few awards in our absence. The majority of what follows this is rather repetitive, so I'm going to play a game development sizzle reel for everyone. Our game is finished, and from here I'm now going to speedrun to becoming a congillionaire by messing with my pricing and running ad campaigns, which I only recently discovered was a thing. One thing I'll point out before we move on is that the most popular class in the game is the Big Boy class, which brings me great joy. The current pricing structure is a free-to-play model that charges $100 per month. We make about $328,000 daily from this pricing, which isn't bad, but the board demands more. Value is set by the creator, and I value our game at a $0 purchasing price and a $500 reoccurring price. As we can see after Exploiting our loyal fan base's addiction to our game, we have just made 1.4 million in one day. When changing this to $5,000 a month, only 128 people renewed that day, and the rest decided that was a bit steep. Let's dial it back slightly to 1,500 per month. That's the sweet spot. We just made 4 million in a day, and we now have 18 million in cash. Our community is thrilled to be here. Dant is thinking about eggplants, and our loyal community built around a game that is only for the elite is now making us 4 million a day. After leaving this running for several in game days, we now have $29,691,407, all thanks to our very poorly made free game that for some reason people want to spend $1,500 on every month. If you enjoyed the video, drop a thumbs up, and to play us out, here's a trailer for Fallout 69, the most expensive, addicting, awful game in the world. Thanks for watching. World Premiere. It is four times the size of Fallout 4. It allows us to have 16 times the detail. There's plenty of cool new Fallout creatures. One big difference with this game, each of those characters is a real person. You can build wherever you want. It's the apocalypse, it's not an amusement park.